Yep. Okay. okay. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. And thank you for joining us for the Granite Staters United for the People press conference. I'm Liz Tenterelli. I'm with the League of Women Voters of New Hampshire. And I'm your MC for today. As Senators Maggie Hassan and Jean Shaheen return to work in Washington today, we've gathered over 25 groups representing tens of thousands of Granite Staters to voice our support for the passage of the For the People Act and the John Lewis Voting Rights Advancement Act. As the For the People Act is being amended, its name may change, but not its intent. We're going to hear today that the vast majority of Granite Staters are united, though that no matter what your age, your zip code, or the color of your skin, you should have the freedom to vote and to have that vote matter. And you should have a government that is free from special interest influence and dark money. It's the working people of New Hampshire and our country who often feel the brunt of that special interest influence and the attacks on our voting freedoms. Let's hear first from Glenn Brackett, president of the New Hampshire AF of LCIO, for a few words about this and the importance of modifying the filibuster to get the For the People Act passed. Glenn. Thank you, Liz. Good afternoon, everybody. As Liz said, my name is Glenn Brackett. I'm the president of the New Hampshire AFL-CIO. Um, it's funny. I got prepared remarks here this morning, but a couple of things have occurred to me, you know, just from the fact is I watch TV too much sometimes, and I see what is happening in this country. Everybody has their own point of view. Everybody believes that freedom is an individual choice. There are things that have to be done in this country that is right for this country. There are things that have to be done in this country that supersede individual rights. This year, we have had the chance to pass the most sweeping pro-worker legislation in decades, the Richard L. Trumka Pro Act Bill. And to pass this bill, thank you, and to pass this bill, we need to end the filibuster logjam in D.C. And we need to get this done, not just for PRO Act, but for voting rights, for gerrymandering. We need to let the people be represented in Washington, not corporations. In the last election season, labor unions in New Hampshire and across the country worked very hard to support pro-labor candidates. Our efforts helped to guarantee that Washington would see the most pro-union administration in years and pro-labor majorities in both the House and the Senate. The Biden administration has come through for workers over and over again, and bills that make workplace safer and fairer have repeatedly passed the House thanks to support of people like our own Chris Pappas. Thank you, Congressman Pappas, for all you've done. But in spite of the unambiguous decisions by the American people to put the power in the hands of pro-working family majorities, crucial parts of our agenda remain stalled. The Richard L. Trumka Protecting the Right to Organize Act, which would be the single largest labor law reform in decades, easily passed the House, but is stuck behind the threat of a Senate filibuster. Why? Why? Absurd Senate archaic rules is why. Right now, because of the filibuster, a minority of senators can stop the full Senate from acting on bills such as the PRO Act or the Butch Lewis. Bills that enjoy the support of the majority of the public. Right now in this country, 
Over 41 million more people are represented by pro-worker senators in D.C. than their anti-labor counterparts. 41 million people. But we have the opportunity to change this and let the majority rule in Washington again. In New Hampshire, we understand what democracy means. We approve town budgets by Democratic vote every spring. We elect the third largest English-speaking legislature in the world so every neighborhood can have their voice heard in the state capitol. We can defend a democracy across the country by passing the For the People Action and the John Lewis Voting Rights Advancement Act. Let's bring the same commitment to democracy in Washington that we have here in New Hampshire. Let's end the ridiculous filibuster logjam. Let's pass the PRO Act and let's put government back into the hands of working families again. Thank you very much. Ain't the rules of COVID wonderful? <laughs> Thank you, Glenn Brackett. Women's right to vote was enshrined into law by the 19th Amendment 101 years ago. Yeah. 50 years ago, the voting age was lowered to include 18 to 20 year olds. Yet here we are facing state lawmakers in New Hampshire and across the country trying to erect barriers to voting. Right now in the New Hampshire House Election Law Committee, there are bills designed to keep domiciled college students from voting and to keep any Granite Stater from registering on the day of the election. To tell us how the For the People Act will help younger voters and voters of color here in New Hampshire, we welcome Ronelle Chela. She is with Black Lives Matter in Manchester and a student at UNH School of Law. Sorry, I have my speech on my phone and this on. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. My name is Renelle Chella, and I am co-founder of Black Lives Matter Manchester, and I'm excited to be speaking with you today in anticipation of the next step in our fight for federal voting rights leg legislation. This past year, myself, along with the other members of Black Lives Matter Manchester, organized several get out the vote efforts geared towards the black community. While we did see some success, the response that we received laid bare just how much work is left to be done in regards to many issues, including voting rights. I've seen firsthand why federal legislation protecting the right to vote is important. While I was a student at the University of New Hampshire in Durham, I had several friends who went to our polling place to vote or the clerk's office to register, and they simply gave up instead of jumping through all of the hoops placed in front of them. Stories like this just aren't just anecdotal. The New Hampshire Supreme Court's, sorry, <laughs> the New Hampshire Supreme Court's recent ruling on SB3 reminded us that legislation with purposely vague or confusing language disenfranchises voters, especially students. And yet, Republicans in the legislature continue to push more anti-voter legislation in bills like HB 554, another bill filled with confusing language aimed at college students. The House Election Law Committee will be taking up this anti-voter bill and others later in the fall, and it's clear that these attacks on voting aren't slowing down. Voices like mine and other young students of color matter, and our stories remind us why federal voting rights legislation, like the For the People Act, is so necessary. We deserve to be active participants in our democracy. As we've seen it taken, apart with attacks on voting rights across the country, I'm further reminded of why we need to pass the For the People Act, and I thank Senators Hassan and Shaheen for their support. Thank you. Th thank you, Renell. The For the People Act and the John Lewis Voting Rights Advancement Act will work together to set nationwide standards for elections and protect voters in all states from efforts to take away that freedom. 
Let's remember that religious leaders like Reverend Martin Luther King and John Lewis raising their voices and putting their lives on the line, that without those efforts, the 1965 Voting Rights Act might never have happened. Here in New Hampshire, the American Friends Service Committee is still working to protect those rights. Please welcome co-director of American Friends Service Committee, Kim uh, uh, Grace Kindeke. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you and good morning. The For the People Act will ensure that all Americans can vote without deliberate barriers to voting. It protects same-day registration, and it makes sure everyone who is eligible to vote can vote without the discriminatory use of provisional ballots, and it expands mail-in voting, which is proven to help voters safely and securely vote from their own homes. We believe that all individuals should have access to a voice and a vote in our participatory democracy without oppression or obstacles. And we thank our senators and our representatives for their co-sponsorship of For the People Act. And we urge them to do everything in their power and influence to ensure that S-1 becomes law this year. Over many decades, our country has made many advancements as we have attempted to address and remove the vestiges of historic and systemic oppressions. But it is of heightened moral concern that we as a country seem to be continue to continue to spiral backwards. Over the last year alone, we have seen a slot of efforts to create new voting and election and practices designed to reverse our democratic process suppress the vote and to erode dem democracy itself, including several attempts right here in New Hampshire. These laws are intentionally designed to create more barriers to disenfranchised voters, especially from historically marginalized communities, and makes it more difficult for low income, disability, black and brown, and other communities of color to exercise their right to participate fully in our democracy. The time is now. And the call is loud and clear that we must act to protect our multicultural democracy and voter suppression schemes, because that is what they are. Today, we at AFSC are proud to stand in solidarity with our partners and add our voice to the call to protect our democracy from those who would maim or dismantle it. Later this week alone, we will continue the call, and we, our AFSC and other faith partners from multiple traditions from the Granite State, will be releasing a letter signed by over 90 faith leaders thanking our congressional delegation, raising our voice, and urging their continued support to champion and pass this critical legislation to protect access to voting for all Americans. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Grace. It's wonderful to hear that New Hampshire faith leaders of all denominations are standing up for the For the People Act. Coretta Scott King said, the failure to invest in youth reflects a lack of compassion and a colossal failure of common sense. It seems that would apply to our climate crisis. Our next speaker, Katie Lassard, attends Bow High School. She is active in 350 New Hampshire, and she has a few words about how the For the People Act will protect young voters and our climate. Katie Lassard. Hi, everyone. My name is Katie Lassard. I'm a youth fellow with 350 New Hampshire, and I'm a high school student from the town of Bow, New Hampshire, which is home to the Merrimack Power Station, the last major coal plant in New England without a shutdown date. This coal plant causes air and water pollution in my community, leading to serious health problems such as asthma, cancer, brain damage, and more. Health problems that can alter the lives of my friends, my family, and my neighbors. Problems that there would be no concern for if our democracy were structured fairly. 
In fact, for 45% of active coal plants in America, it would be cheaper to build new renewables than it would be to continue to run the existing coal plant. Yet this change has not been made. Not only would this change protect local ecosystems, prevent major life-threatening problems for people, and prevent the impending climate crisis, but it would actually be in the economic interest for the companies running the plants. How could our democracy have gotten to a point where a system that works for virtually none of the players in a situation has been allowed to be perpetuated? This corruption has taken a government that is supposed to be of the people and has made it to work for only a handful of individuals. In fact, only 12 mega donors and their spouses, a total of 19 individuals, accounted for about one in every $13 in federal policies from between January 2009 and December 2020. This is unacceptable. Structural changes have to be implemented to prevent these closed door deals and corrupt money plays that allow the voices of a few to trump the dire needs of many. Restructuring campaign finance in the way that the For the People Act does can help alleviate these problems. Further, many people living in highly polluted areas are even more underrepresented in their government. Highly polluted areas are disproportionately found in low-income communities, particularly those with higher populations of BIPOC, and there are further ways these voices are silenced in politics. For example, policies causing extreme waiting times for voting can make voting inaccessible for these communities, as people have to deal with things such as childcare and their jobs. This problem is only exacerbated by the recent move by the GOP to counter absentee ballots, a move that could make voting accessible for so many more people. The same populations who most direly need their voices heard are affected the worst by our current voting policies, and this has to change. Additionally, current policies such as the filibuster can prevent necessary urgent policies from being passed timely. There is, a lim there is limited time to tackle the climate crisis, and with each passing day, more and more people are affected by extreme weather events, wildfires, sea level rise, and more. This obstructionist policy needs to go for the safety of the people. Americans deserve better. We deserve a Congress that takes action to help us, not a Congress that actively works to delay giving us the help we need. This is the future that the For the People Act could bring us, which is why it's imperative that we pass it. Thank you. Thank you, Katie. You know, we're, we're depending on young people like you to hold our legislators' feet to the fire now and in the decades to come. Yes. The For the People Act includes a provision that institutes an independent redistricting commission to establish congressional districts, and it outlaws gerrymandering. Yes. Fair maps mean that voters can elect their representatives who share their concerns. This is particularly important for Granite Staters who support reproductive justice. Please welcome Zandra Rice Hawkins, Executive Director of Granite State Progress. Zandra. Hello, my name is Xander Rice Hawkins. I am the Executive Director of Granite State Progress, and we are so proud to be here with all of these folks and groups today for democracy. We all know that there have been attacks on reproductive rights in state houses across the country and down in DC. And the truth is that the politicians and groups behind this know that the public does not stand with them. So it's no surprise that those same politicians and groups oppose legislation to ensure fair maps to ensure voting rights for all of us to make sure that campaign finance reform doesn't mean that the few wealthy individuals get to determine what life looks like for the rest of us. Yeah. Our reproductive rights, our bodily autonomy for people, the right to self-determination, those are intrinsically linked with our voting rights. The right to determine for ourselves when and if to start a family, and what those families will look like, live like, the communities that they will live in, and to make sure that those are healthy communities, that our families can grow up safe and secure. The same people, these few wealthy, powerful interests who are opposed to these reforms, do not want to see a full, multiracial, 
strong, healthy democracy. And it is our job here today and every day to say that we demand that our voice is heard in our country, that we demand our rights at the voting box, and that we expect our elected officials to represent the true values that represent our families. Yes. We are proud to stand here today with all of these organizations, a broad cross collection of issue groups that care deeply for each of their own issues and for our collective liberation around voting rights and democracy. We'd like to thank Congressman Chris Pappas and the congressional delegation for their leadership and to encourage them to continue to work hard for all of us. Thank you, Zandra. My organization, the Nonpartisan League of Women Voters, has been fighting for over 100 years for all women to have a voice in making the laws that govern us. The For the People Act and the John Lewis Voting Rights Advancement Act will get us closer to that goal. Many in Congress support the For the People Act and the John Lewis Voting Rights Act. Our final speaker is not only a supporter of those crucial bills, but a champion of them as well. Please welcome New Hampshire's own Congressman Chris Pappas. Thank you. Well, thank you so much, Liz, and what a great morning it is to be here together in Manchester to support our democracy and to ensure that we in Washington are translating the will of the voters into good policies that are gonna move this country forward. So I wanna thank all of our speakers for your words here this morning, for your activism, and for just all the enthusiasm that's represented in this crowd. This is really terrific. Um, you know, this coalition that has brought us here together this morning is dedicated to ensuring the right to vote is not infringed and that we're doing all we can to pass legislation in Washington to protect that right to vote, to guarantee free and fair elections, and to get the undue influence of big special interest money out of our electoral system once and for all. Now the power in our government is derived from we the people. It's not we the lobbyists, it's not we the super PACs, it's not we the corporations, we the people. And it's about time that the voices of everyday Americans were front and center in Washington and in state houses across this country so that truly this is a government of, by, and for the people. And I'm just so thankful that we have so many folks here in New Hampshire who are taking up this cause. H.R. 1 and the John Lewis Voting Rights Advancement Act are groundbreaking pieces of legislation that will shore up our democracy against efforts to make it harder to vote and rig our political system. These efforts have ramped up since the last election, fueled by dangerous conspiracy theories like the big lie about President Biden's victory. And we know this pattern is familiar to us in New Hampshire. We have seen this song and dance routine before. We saw it after the 2016 election. We've seen it in insinuations about college students here in New Hampshire. And we know that we are stronger as a state and as a country when everyone's voice is heard in our democracy. And that's what we're fighting for here. So there are hundreds of voter suppression bills pending across the country that seek to suppress the vote. Our democracy belongs to all of us and is not the property of any one political party or any one special interest group. And if we're serious about encouraging everyone to participate and reflecting the will of the voters at the ballot box and in our work, then we have additional work to do. So we saw during the pandemic how in New Hampshire, when we made it easier for individuals to vote, they appreciated the choice to be able to vote safely and securely from home. And that's one of the provisions that's supported in H.R. 1, the For the People Act. And that's one of the reasons why I've co-sponsored the bill and voted for it twice over the last two years. The fact is it shouldn't take a pandemic or a blizzard on town meeting day to realize that we should be making voting easier and not harder for people here in the Granite States and in other states across the country. H.R. 1 and H.R. 4, the John Lewis bill, have a number of provisions that would accomplish this from automatic registration to early vote and removing practices that are known to put up barriers for individuals to access the right to vote. I'm pleased that my legislation has been included uh, in this effort. It's the Protect the Youth Vote Act, which looks to stop systemic um, efforts to target young people and college students, and we've got to make sure that we are aware of those efforts and doing everything we can to stop them. 
Other critical provisions in the bill will limit the influence of dark special interest money and to take on corruption. And as has been mentioned, we find ourselves in a redistricting year and we know how important it is for New Hampshire and for the other 49 states to have fair maps when it comes to their congressional representatives and their state and local officials. Yes. Look, gerrymandering is wrong when Republicans do it and it's wrong when Democrats do it. And these bills would address both of those scenarios and that's why I'm such a passionate supporter of them. We've got to put the power of our democracy into your hands and to make sure that politicians aren't picking our elected officials, that you all are picking our elected officials. So I continue to urge my colleagues, Senator Hassan and Senator Shaheen and others in the Senate to pass these bills. I think we're hearing some good news coming out of the Senate of a compromise and a path forward uh, potentially to a vote this week on the For the People Act and the John Lewis Voting right, Rights Act. And I continue to hope that the Senate can find a way forward here. Look, only when we give everyone a seat at the table are we truly going to live up to our full potential as a nation. It's been mentioned here today in terms of some of the issues that our voters are clamoring for, whether it's action on climate change, whether it's health care, whether it is access to reproductive rights. Um, it's important that we're reflecting the will of the voters, and the way we do that is by ensuring each and every person can vote and each and every person is heard. So I hear you, and I hope that my colleagues in Washington will continue to hear you and the need to get something done here. Look, in my time in the House, it was a true honor to be able to serve alongside John Lewis. He was a hero. He represented the moral compass, not just of the Congress, but of the country. And he would often say that his journey was not the journey of a day, a week, a month, or a year. It was the journey and the struggle of a lifetime. Unfortunately, he's left us. And so that struggle is now our struggle. We have to carry that forward to truly make sure this is a country that reflects the dignity of our people and the voices of each and every person in our country. We can do this. This is not just the right thing to do and the American thing to do, it's also the popular thing to do. The people of New Hampshire stand with you all and I'm just really pleased to be able to reflect that in our work in Washington. Thank you for coming out here today and thank you, Liz, for putting this together. So this ends our speaking program, but we invite members of the press to talk one-on-one -on -one with our speakers or the representatives of these groups, any of our supporting groups. We thank you all for coming. I sure thank this beautiful display behind me. Yeah, let's go for Vote, vote for the People Act. <laughs>